Alpha 54, stern and ready for competition. He doesn't take any flack in that interview. That is right. I love it. All work and no play, Johnny boy. Yeah, he just doesn't want to change the game in any way. He doesn't want to remove any mechanics. He just wants to keep playing the car he's playing. He, he knows what he wants. He's living his dream currently. Uh, I love to see it. <laughs> well, it's almost time for our first series of the day. So let's talk about it, Jorby. Kicking things off today, we're going to have the lower bracket semi-final. It's going to be Koi going up against Optic Gaming. Talk to me, Jorby. Set the scene. Let's do this. Yeah, Optic on a come up. And AJ, a big reason for it, but Magic Bear has looked great as well. Uh, Optic have been getting it done in all three modes. They've had a tumultuous uh, off-season almost with uh, how they've been trying to come back. But Koi, obviously the story of the tournament. Cosmic being their big 1v1 guy. I think Koi are serviceable enough in 3v3. This is going to be a close series against Optic. If they bring the same 3v3 game we saw against Complexity yesterday, then Optic have to be at least a little worried about Koi here. I mean, a brutal path in the lower bracket, let's be honest, for both of them, for Koi and, of course, for Optic Gaming, Johnny. I mean, do you feel like if a team manages to successfully power their way through that lower bracket to then eventually get to the grand final, then momentum is surely on their side in that grand final? Yeah, the next matchup for the winner of this will be against the loser of the upper finals. So they're going to be going against a team who have just lost uh, the upper finals. So definitely an advantage there. You know, I'm thinking as well, you know, a lot of people are probably underestimating Koi's 3v3 level coming into this because Optic are such a fan favorite and seeing them do well is something that people have waited for for a long time. Seeing them qualify for a big land is something people have waited for for a long time. But actually Koi have, I think, been better in 3v3 in this event so far. Uh, Optic have been, I think, you know, gr they're good enough in 3v3, definitely, um, but they are absolutely brilliant in the other game modes as well. So it's it's all about if Koi can keep that threes form from yesterday. If they can, then they're in with a shot to win it. Jorby, uh, Cosmic is comfortable. He's had a few reps now on the main stage, but he's gonna, gonna be going up against AJ. So what's your thoughts on that? Do you feel like experience on AJ's side is gonna back him a little bit more? Do you think Cosmic's just now on a tear and the ball is rolling? Well, that's the fun thing about this format is a best of one, 1v1, anything can happen. You get Ray's Bull beating Daniel two to one. You get Cosmic winning his series against Ray's Bull. So really it's anything goes in these best of ones. Cosmic is absolutely good enough to take down AJ. And, and I don't think AJ has shown his best 1v1 self at this event yet. So if he continues to show that form, Cosmic absolutely has a great chance against him. I mean, also, I feel like regardless of how everything turns out, these four teams that remain, they have qualified for Gamers 8 later in the year. And where else are you going to get reps like this in high-level competition against these other teams and successfully play in the twos, in the ones? You know, just get this practice in before you actually have to go to Gamers 8 later in the summer, Johnny Boy. Yeah, it's a phenomenal uh, chance for these teams to practice. You know, not just your uh, teams like Koi and uh, teams like Optic, who haven't really put it together this season, but teams like G2, who are not really made for this format. They're still trying to improve in the in this crew battles format, and they're on a great run right now. Uh, V1 as well, you know, brand new 3v3 teams, so with Daniel added in here. So any practice is, is good practice for them all at this stage, um, especially in a format that's going to be new for most players when they're playing together. Well, it is almost time for that first matchup. So I'm going to come to you both for your predictions of Optic versus Koi. Jorby, kick things off. You know, I'm going to go Koi here. I Ooh. think Koi looked good enough in the 3v3 against Complexity yesterday. Uh, I think they match up well enough here against Optic. I know a bunch of Optic fans out there, uh, you're probably not happy about that. But I'm <laughs> telling you, Koi got a good one here with Cosmic, and their threes has been pretty good so far. So I got them. Johnny Boy, what about yourself, my friends? I mean, I, I don't believe this. I, I expected Jarby to say Optic here, oh, no and I way. thought I was going to throw a, a wrench in the plans. But yeah, it, I, I think Koi are going to win this as well. They've currently got a better 3v3 record, uh, four wins, two losses, compared to the three wins, three losses of Optic in this tournament. And they've got uh, Cosmic, the ones main, who I think is a good shot against AJ. Um, so I've got to lean towards Koi here, just based on form alone. I think Optic, they've done well to, to get this far, but, um, you know, I know, I know they're a big fan favorite, but guys, Koi are playing really well. They just eliminated Complexity, the team that beat Optic in the upper bracket. Um, everything's pointing towards Koi winning this for, my, uh, for me. We've cursed maybe them, I'll, Johnny. We've cursed oh, them. Well, you just have, yeah. Potentially, maybe our casters will have something to say about that. But alrighty, let's kick off day two of Rocket League at Gamers Without Borders. Optic Gaming up against Koi. Let's go over to our casters. It's the Brits. It's Cole and Stumpy.
Do you want to hear something, Stumpy, from me? I actually was to. thinking that Koi have got a pretty good shot here for the reasons that uh, Johnny Boy said afterwards. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. S5 Cosmic did so well in his second 1v1 yesterday. After struggling at the beginning against Atomic, he really turned it on after. And I just feel like these events, these, these matchups, they swing either way based on how the 1v1 goes. It can totally mm -hmm. change the momentum. I think also it changes it for the 3v3s and the 2v2s when you're thinking, okay, we rely on, say, AJ, for example, and then say he loses in that 1v1, and you're thinking, oh, is he then shaken from that? He's thinking, oh, I'm just the big man trying to go into that series, yeah. into that game, and then he can't actually come out and get that win. But, Koi, I'm surprised that that is a double death prediction in favor Are you going to buy the trend? Him. Are you going to buy the trend? Because I'm, I'm going Koi as well, mate. Are you going to be Optic Savior? I don't know. Because, I mean, Johnny makes a very good point where he, he's saying that on Koi, they've got that better record, 4-2 and two in the 3v3, rather than 3-3. Three and three. In the 1v1s, they've got the, they've got the specialist in um, the S5 Cosmic. In the 2v2, they didn't look too bad either um, when they managed to uh, beat Axel, so, um, uh, do, do fantastically against Axel. But then they got smashed in the 2v2 versus Complexity 6-1. So 2v2, I think, probably their weakest game mode. Yeah. Hey, that's still two out of three that they're doing fantastically well at. And an early chance is flying in straight away for Koi. And you know what? I'm going to make it a quad Koi sandwich. Get a me involved. Koi sandwich. You can't ask for much more than that unless you're actually on the Koi team and suddenly you see yourself go 1-0 down against AJ. The sandwich is dented early doors in game one. It's a lovely pass well coming in from Rettles. The cheesy filling of that sandwich exploding out the net from AJ's shot. But it was that 50 with Rettles where he sends it towards that left-hand wall. It was the double commit from Koi and early doors looking potentially a little bit nervy and thinking, OK, lads, we're here. We've made it to that land, which, oh, my word, not too many people would have expected. And cheese at one end, cheese at the other. Yeah, the sandwich is looking tasty again for Koi. It's a good response. And actually, it's a huge mistake from Rettles. We haven't seen him make that sort of miss in a long time. He's been in super good form for Optic. But um, I did just actually want to shout out Koi and their 3v3 yesterday against Complexity. People were expecting that Complexity would have a great start against them. They're mm -hmm. in such good form themselves in 3v3, running so close in so many tournaments, semi-finals they got recently at mm -hmm. the Major. And they come up against Koi. And I think in particular Sosa. He didn't do the 2v2s, obviously didn't do the 1v1 because they do have S1, uh, S5 Cosmic. And he was playing brilliantly with Sosa. His flip resets were working. The mechanics were there. He was getting flip resets fakes, air dribbles against complexity. He's really seeming like a star at the moment for Koi. And I'm not too surprised to see them equalize. They could even get another, depending on Cheese's pass. But it's just a little bit too far behind. But there's the danger for Koi. And what I liked as well from Sosa is that just even on social media, he just seems very thankful and very appreciative of all of these chances. And I always like to see that from players. Being very excited. He's so he's excited to head over to Saudi Arabia in August for the Gamers 8 land. So good for him, good for the team. Koi are, I think, going to be getting a lot of fans through this competition. You mentioned pressure as well. And ironically, even though this is the equivalent of Championship Sunday for uh, Gamers Without Borders, this is where the pressure is, is somewhat gone. They've already done the hard bit, beating complexity in that lower bracket. They had to go on the run in beating Team Axel as well. The pressure bit's done. Now they can start to just get used to this pitch, get used to playing 2v2s and 1v1s in the crew battle format and also get some more experience against top tier competition mm, like Optic the biggest who one. have been in great form themselves. And yeah, that's the biggest one too the experience versus other teams in this competition oh, save. great save across by Gyro. Cheese did have it covered but Gyro sending it to the corner is going to mean that it can get just past that halfway line but AJ taking straight to the ceiling. Cheese then to challenge him it goes far but with Gyro on the back left he can't quite catch on to it until Rettles has a bite of that cherry so to send it along again Gyro's waiting. Gyro to shoot but a block out midfield from AJ and look at these passes coming in all over the place from Koi. My man Sosa, I said that yesterday he was looking pretty spicy. He's kept that one going. I'm not sure if he meant to get this as a double. Oh, he did actually. Okay. Did. I didn't know if he was just going for the shot earlier on because the uh, the opportunity was there. But even if the first touch was a little bit heavy, he had the wherewithal stumpy to turn it into a 2-1 lead for Koi. Probably wanted it to be a little bit higher on the backboard. Um, I wanted that to be a bit more of a convincing double tap. I managed to get just about his nose to it, sent it opposite post. And under halfway through the game, Koi with that lead. What a fantastic run of form they're having. And also in, in the game modes that you wouldn't really expect them to be taking versus top teams. Good flip reset from AJ goes low with it. That is a wonderful demonstration of the one skills that we will be seeing later today, hopefully. I mean, AJ yesterday, uh, he and Magic Bear were just combining so well time after time as well. So it's no surprise to see him already waking up and starting to unleash himself upon this series. 
And the 1v1 players, so much of this Crew Battles format is about how they're feeling on the day. So AJ scoring that sort of goal, goal early on is great news for Optic. Under two minutes remaining, and both these teams drawn to a piece. Cheese up high for this one, up for the double, with AJ not able to oh. make that touch. It goes very close to the crossbar. Sosa again coming in to snipe it. It was eight seconds until Koi managed to sink another one in. Shout out to Gyro as well. He left this one for Sosa, showing that Koi's communication is up there with their mechanics right now. They're looking every bit like a premium team in these 3v3s, and they're building on what they had yesterday. It's always so disappointing when a team has one pop-off day, then the next they just look toothless, average. Mm. Koi are not falling into that trap so far. Cheap on that left wall, manages to see that ball yet again for Jaro. This communication coming in clutch, but with no boost, Jaro will have to leave, not after getting a bump, however. And bear in mind, this is Jaro versus his very, very former teammate uh, in Rettles, uh, years on, maybe, yeah, yeah, I suppose years ago. Uh, back, back in Dreamhack, managing to get those, uh, teaming up to win the uh, Dreamhack tournament, so. Sorry? Peep stubs. Yes, Peeps. exactly. And uh, Cheese managing to go rock down the other end and sends it opposite corner. Koi clear by two. Also like seeing the uh, the rogue gold explosion there for Koi. A little throwback mm. to the history of this all. Nice to see. Um, but yeah, Koi impressive yet again. And when they are falling behind, when they are conceding goals, not letting it shake them. Still attacking, still playing aggressively as Gyro makes that clear. The Magic Bear gets a block. Rettles in the corner. Here is Cheese. He puts that one into the middle. AJ gets it high. Where's this ball going to land? Optic have to turn this one on. They have to get going soon. So far, it's only really AJ that looks alive. We haven't seen too much from Magic Bear and Rettles. All I can remember him doing is making that mistake. Under a minute remaining, and it falls down to Optic to need to get two goals in just these 50 seconds. AJ letting that ball fly very loose. Good bump in the back half by, uh, I think it was Rettles getting one of those demos, but it didn't actually lead anywhere. 10 more seconds has ticked down. Final chances for Optic before we get into that 2v2 or the 1v1. Bear in mind it's crew battles, so the loser will be choosing our next game mode that we're going to be playing. Cheese to send it long past that attacking player, and with 30 seconds remaining and the seconds ticking down, the long shot is going to be benefiting Optic considerably. Just when my mind was starting to turn towards whether we were about to see a 1v1 or a 2v2, a breakaway goal comes in, and AJ gratefully prods it home. 22 seconds left. We saw some kickoff goals yesterday. Is there going to be more late drama in game one of this best of five? It's a fake kickoff there from Optic. Mm. AJ's going to try and do something with it, but this sort of backfired. Magic Bear has to try and get this boost. He's not able to do that either. And Koi seems so far to have quelled the beast, but they have 10 seconds left. It's a good chance here for Gyro to just take the control, waste a couple of seconds, does flick around the side of Magic Bear, but with Rettles waiting, Cheese can get a fantastically long clear. One touch high, keeping it out of the way of any player on Optic Gaming, and Koi continue that 3v3 winning statistics. They're now 5-2 and two in this competition. Fantastic work, and Optic on the back foot. Do they go into the 1v1 versus the 1v1 specialist that we're seeing on Koi in S5 um, Cosmic, or are they going into a 2v2? It's got to be a 2v2. That is where Koi have really been struggling. As a reminder, the team that loses game one and loses that 3v3, they get to choose. So right now, the onus is on Optic Gaming. They'll be discussing it, thinking, do we go into this 1v1? Is AJ feeling hot enough to take down Koi's secret weapon in S5 Cosmic? Or do we play it a little bit more safe? And I think it's got to be the safe option right here because Gyro and Cheese, their 2v2 play style, they seem a little bit detached from each other from what we've seen so far. They were just smacked about 6-1 yesterday against Complexity. I mean, it was there was three goals in the last 30 seconds or so, mm -hmm. but you just sensed that a collapse like that was coming. With that in mind, surely Optic pick 2v2. And bear in mind, you're looking at S5 Cosmic 2, who, if people don't know him, he is the top 1v1 player on the ranked leaderboards right now. He has been brought in for this very situation, and AJ will be taking him on immediately, though, conceding. One second. I can't remember the last time I've seen a one second goal. That's. Uh... If we can extrapolate, that <laughs> therefore means we're going to be seeing 500. about uh, 360 goals. Is that right? It's 300 goals, sorry. Someone can figure it out. I'm not that. Uh, smart. Not anymore. Yeah, it's 300 goals, but not anymore, unfortunately. The time's going to be ticking down a little bit. Well, now we're into a more regular and steady one versus one where AJ is going to be able to try and put his mechanics to the test 
against S5 Cosmic, who has been showing up. I mean, you have to remember that in his first matchup uh, yesterday against G2 Esports, he actually lost against Atomic. And mm -hmm. when you're brought in for that 1v1s... Like nerves, though, right? That's what I'm... Yeah, exactly. That's the point I was going to make. When you're brought in for the 1v1 and lose it fairly comfortably, you mm. can start to lose your confidence. S5 Cosmic, though, making a lovely save, managing to get it out just far enough and punishing AJ for sticking around on that ball. The awkward bounce around the side leaves it to a dish, Ooh. and he deals with it fantastically. Not quite one goal every second for S5 Cosmic, but I don't think he'll be too disappointed with how this 1v1 has started with the dish right there. AJ left stranded, and even getting into that point, he had some defending to do as well. AJ had way too much boost and way too much ball control for S5 Cosmic's liking, but he defended valiantly. And he's also won that kickoff as well. So, so far, the 50-50 game going S5 Cosmic's way. And also the mechanics seem to be uh, in his favor as well. AJ at the moment is looking to be the number two player um, in 1v1 in the world uh, when you're looking at how uh, these players have been performing in tournaments recently. Rank leaderboards, they mean something. They give you the general idea of how a player is doing if they're really trying to put those hours in just with other people on the rank leaderboards. But when you look at competitions, it's entirely different. And S5 Cosmic, he manages to avoid that air dribble bump and trying to be getting this other save. Actually takes that ball low, does not want to be going high for it, and ignores the ball in favor of the boost. Knows that AJ is low as well, and so he's got pure advantage. S5 Cosmic straight off the back of defeating Raisball by six goals to three yesterday in Koi's huge qualification matchup against Complexity. So the confidence will be surging through his veins, which it has to be when you're up against AJ, a man who has so much in the way of mechanics, can turn nothing into a goal. S5 Cosmic oh. has to time his flip well there, but oh. AJ does make the most of the slight misplay and makes it 2-1 to Koi. It was a good idea here from SI Cosmic just to flip and then land, but he lands awkwardly, removes all momentum from him. AJ realizes that, gets that close touch, and then an early flick. He knows that S5 Cosmic will need to dive in on that as fast as he can to build any momentum possible. Optic Gaming getting their one goal. AJ, not quite out of this one by any means. And with an open net, that's going to be 3-1 straight off the kickoff yet again. Definitely going in favor of the new boy on Koi. He's definitely been watching AJ's playstyle and seeing how he faces these kickoffs because he seems to have them read. It's also even more impressive what S5 Cosmic is doing right here because AJ's he's warmed up. You know, he's been mm. playing the 3v3. He's got himself into that competitive mindset. Poor old S5 Cosmic, he's watching his teammates play on the on the big screen, right? He's hoping they'll do well in free play. Whoa. Then he has to come up against uh, well-playing AJ and mm. perform. It's a really difficult situation, and AJ's punishing that now. I do like that Koi went for the 1v1 specialist. I really enjoy that. I like when the teams don't just approach this as, oh, okay, we'll go into it and we've got the same three players that we normally would for a competition. They're thinking, well, we can have a sub. None of us really specialize in 1v1, and that is literally a third of this competition. Theoretically, you know, if it's chosen to be, and if it's the best of seven and it goes to seven, you will be playing a 1v1, then, yeah, you're, you're going to need to... Not even that. Even if you don't go to that um, seven, you'll still be playing those ones. So... Yeah, it, it's it's very interesting when teams pick up somebody and think, yeah, this this is the chance that we have got to put them on the map and also to increase our stock. And a lovely double save coming out from S5 there. Yeah, but he won't be so happy that he's having to make these saves. AJ's now starting to get the read on S5 Cosmic and almost has the boost control, but that's an important down. grab right there from S5 Cosmic, allowing him to do that slowdown. He wants to just try and tempt AJ in, make him commit to a move. And she doesn't fall for it. And now he has some ball control. Is he able to win this race with the ball into the goal? Oh. No, because S5 Cosmic pops up from nowhere and AJ has to try again. From the blind spot, S5 Cosmic managing to keep this one at the one goal lead for him. Two minutes now remaining. AJ's going to be chasing that one up for an early challenge. Ooh. S5 Cosmic did manage to get the reset. Wave dashes back down towards the floor with AJ 23 boost and S5 with 100. It's going to be in favor of S5, but AJ staying grounded because he knows that he won't be able to recover too quickly if he leaves the ground otherwise with zero boost and S5 on 95. It's going to fall to more defense for him. AJ has had fantastic play when he has been on low boost so far. Will they be able to continue? No. Relinquishes control just towards the end of that uh, 30 seconds or so. Yeah, but now he's got so much in the tank. What's he able to do, AJ? Is he going to get a flip reset here or just a fake? It is a fake. Once again, S5 Cosmic's defense coming in clutch. He's got one more save to make. Isn't going to be able to do it, but can AJ get around? Oh, no, right. again. And S5 Gosh. has the timing just to let that ball land on his nose and keep it going. Keep that control at all times. 
He's going to try and get in the way of AJ. AJ reads it well and can recover. That should be 3-3, and it will be 3-3. I was half expecting S5 to spawn from somewhere behind the ball somehow. The fact that he's been diving in so far and just managing to save it away so late, I thought surely he's being eclipsed at this point. But no, AJ manages to bring it back to 3-all. And to be honest, we've seen some real low-scoring 1v1s in this competition so far. This is a 3-all going into the final minute. We saw, what was it, Daniel versus Ray's ball. That was a 2-1 yesterday. It had been somewhat cagey and ultimately safe. And that shot from S5 Cosmic it was safe. Thankfully, gets bumped towards the ball. Does not get demoed in the process. The open net miss is not going to be too much of an issue. And AJ just tries to dribble him back down the pitch to turn him away from it. And it all came from the kickoff. A different style of kickoff. The fake S5 Cosmic. It seemed like he'd lost it going into his own corner, but managed to turn that into an advantage for himself. And now he restores his own lead. 50 seconds from Koi going 2-0 up in games against Optic Gaming. <laughs> Able to turn $125,000 for charity into $175,000. And potentially make oh. an even further run for Koi. S5 Cosmic is coming alive. Keeps AJ grounded on the air draw bump, giving him a taste of his own medicine, sends it high with a couple of taps, and then even though he makes no contact, he shuts down the angle that AJ wants to get into. AJ does touch the ball, but not quite enough. Now, a two-goal difference, very, very make upable by AJ in the final that 35. Works. AJ does have control yet again. S5 Cosmic has never feared this happening. Always seems to be in complete control, even though AJ may have oh, the ball. Nice. And he's going to take it into his own corner as well. Brilliant from S5 Cosmic. Come on, AJ. You want this ball? Come get it. Because as soon as you do, I'm going to go past you. Try and get it in your net. Oh. Catch again from S5 Cosmic. Again. And he's taking it back to his own corner. It's brilliant. So frustrating. <laughs> you can see why this guy has been able to grind his way to the top of the 1v1 mm. leaderboard. As soon as he senses a weakness, I he like will that. punish it. He will waste as much time as necessary and do whatever oh, it so takes much. to win. And now Koi only need one more game from the last three. That's a that's just brilliant time management at the end. We say time management sometimes, and it comes down to a player just defending or just managing to dribble it away a little bit. That is the perfect definition of time wasting in Rocket League. Let the seconds tick down. You don't need another goal. You're two up anyway. He managed just to get the one straight away off that kickoff as well. But being able to just realize that, hey, I've got time here. I don't need to attack. If I relinquish control, that just gives more time and more opportunity for AJ to score. I love movement like it. It's a fascinating play style for S5 Cosmic as well because he did let AJ play his game. Often when you see a player go up against a player like AJ, somebody so mechanical, they have to suppress them. They have to stop them getting control of the ball. They have to stop them launching these air dribbles, these uh, these these um, bum dribbles, whatever it might be, right? S5 Cosmic allowed AJ pretty much to do what he wanted at times and had enough confidence in his defense that he'd still stop AJ scoring. And then in moments like this, you saw that occasionally AJ would overcommit because of it and S5 Cosmic's relatively defensive play style paid dividends. I, I, I like that play more now that I've seen it the second time as well because we see that S5 rooted via the boost too. He knew that he had to get out of the way, otherwise he was getting demoed. Just good movement from him. But he is going to be off the pitch, back on the sub bench. He won't be playing another game in this series. He has done his job. And now it falls back down to Sosa, Gyro and Cheese on Koi to shut this one out 3-0. And Optic Gaming, they need to start this reverse sweep here and now. You sort of get whiplash when you go from 1v1 to 3v3. There are players everywhere, but AJ still finds a way through all of them. AJ's been in every game so far, and he is warmed up to the gills. A lovely double tap. Onto then the double tap on the backboard with the flip reset. He's on fire. Koi, they are going to be facing a monster in the third match. Well, I mean, they, this is where the format can really help Optic. Even though they're two games down, they'll be thinking, if we can just get through one 3v3, then it's 2v2 after that. And they will be supremely confident in the 2v2 based on how they've played for now and also how Koi have played. So a massive, massive match, even more so than normal when it's 2-0 in the series. Yeah, bear in mind, whatever match, or rather, whatever game mode is chosen in that second match by the losing team, it falls down to then the one that we have not chosen so far. So because we've seen 1v1 so far, we'll then be seeing 2v2 as our next alternative game mode. <laughs> 1 minute 10 has elapsed so far with Optic Gaming and that one goal lead. Koi haven't had a huge amount of chances, and we're seeing Optic Gaming flex their mechanical muscles. Koi are charging down Optic quick, though. 
so fast every time Uptick try and come forward, not being allowed to do anything, having to battle for every touch of the ball. Sosa gets it towards Jara, who turns away on the mid, but AJ's there again. He's already been the difference maker in this series. Can he do it again? Not quite there, but I mean, AJ has already got the goal that he got, as well as a double flip reset attempt earlier. So the man is feeling sparkly right now. He really fancies getting some of these mechanical plays. But Koi defending doggedly, none of them can come forward themselves. Yeah, no other uh, injuries to report of, I suppose, until Optic now had this chance to shoot. She's to save it away after uh, Magic Bear took quite a weak shot. Rettles to fake, and AJ comes in to try and get that spiking shot down. Doesn't manage to score it, so it falls back towards Rettles on the left-hand wing. Pinch is central again. Magic Bear waits. Magic Bear poaches the second. Just rotations, boost control, and then finally the 50-50 on the goal line to finish it all off. Gyro did all he could to see that one away, but it was scored right there by Magic Bear, who's not got a bad 50-50 game himself. Optic Gaming starting to look a little bit more like themselves. I feel like looking at themselves too is something that Optic have needed. They've not had that fantastic win rate so far in this tournament. I think they're now five, uh, three wins, four losses in 3v3. So not a great game mode for them. Magic Bear to pass that back towards AJ, but Cheese is able to intercept it halfway through the game. And we're going to be seeing Cheese work out of the defense. A good touch round the side by Sosa. Another pre-flip to get it over towards that orange side of the net and onto the goal. But no real convincing shot just yet. And good defense from Optic keeps it to that 2-0 lead. Cheese is going to be able to get this one away. I thought it was a weak touch at first, but Gyro was in the perfect position. So it's actually good communication yet again from Koi. It's been a feature of their 3v3s, having full belief in each other, knowing when to rotate out and come in themselves. Oh. Sosa not afraid of diving in, especially when Optic are dangling the ball on the goal line. Gyro getting a couple of close 50s too, with Cheese to get that central. Rettles wants to get an easy touch, but Sosa sees he's going for that light touch, can immediately challenge him, pinches it over the top. Optic Gaming have had that lead cut down to just the one, and with two minutes remaining, Koi have got really good standing to be able to secure another one, and maybe close this one out 3-0 if they're able to, to get it. They're sticking to their playstyle, Koi, of these fast challenges, not letting Optic have any control of the ball in the air, forcing them to rush if they want it as Magic Bear sends it forwards. Gyro's in straight away as well. He's broken oh, up everything Optic have done. It's led to a chance for Sosa. Magic Bear charges it down, and Cheese oh, says geez. no to that play. There's a pass then towards Gyro. That, I think, was an opportunity oh. if Cheese had committed. If Cheese just leathered that towards the net, I reckon that goes in. No one's expecting him to half turn, but it felt like that was a great opportunity. Gyro getting oh. the double reset. Sosa can shoot off it, but Gyro, we said about flexing those mechanical muscles on behalf of S5 Cosmic, we're now seeing the man reborn on Koi. A fun lobby this is. Freestyles all over the place. AJ at the heart and soul of all of it. He's going to have to rotate out this time, though. Rells, what can you offer in that regard? It's him and Magic Bear combining, trying to pinch the ball into the net. Unable to do so. The clock moves on to one minute remaining. Optic Gaming trying desperately to stay in this series. Rettles is up. Could give a little bit of breathing space oh, to Optic. Nice Magic pass. Bear's coming in, but it's saved by Gyro. Lovely pass coming down as well. I, I, I feel like it was probably a shot, but the fact that it came into a good position for his teammate, man, it, it, it's worth just as much. But no goal scored from it on that opportunity. Rettles with one reset, zero boost. However, gets caught out then in the save by Gyro. Gyro sees Cheese central, but AJ can be shutting it down. Cheese towards that backboard and a bump Ooh. and a touchdown. Nearly the negative angle own goal by Magic Bear. There's still a chance though for Koi. They're keeping it in Optic Gaming's half, but that clearance from Magic Bear is huge. AJ has to leave it though. Gyro goes for the half flip. Let's just get that ball the lightest touch, the redirect. Unable to do so then. Now Cheese, his teammate has the ball until AJ from the skies charges him down. Gyro may be able to launch one more attack for Koi. It's in the air. Who's going to win this race? It almost was oh. Gyro. Cheese is going to benefit Jeez. though from a little bit of uncertainty. Oh. Almost gets the double, oh. but it's over Sosa. And it's over with regards to the game as well. 2-1 ends and the series lives on. Just a smidge past Sosa too. I feel like we've seen a couple of those where you might then see Gyro at the back just waiting to then score it, but wasn't able to on that opportunity. Zero seconds. Near heartbreak for Optic if they concede that too, because they needed that just to stay in the competition. Oof! Optic, they've bought themselves back into the game. 
So now we're going to go over to a 2v2 once the next game begins. And it's going to be, let's just say it's going to be difficult for Gyro and Cheese. They'll be up against mm -hmm. AJ and Magic Bear. Rettles is able to kick back, you know, go on the beach and enjoy this next one in his sandals for a little while. Definitely the favorites will be Optic Gaming in this 2v2. And maybe does that make them favorites in this series? You know, if they're odds on to win the twos and then potentially take that momentum into the, uh, into mm. the reverse sweep earner in game five? Unsure, because the threes are still in favor of Koi, I would say, even though Optic just managed to win that game. I, uh, I'm intrigued whether they would maybe bring an S5 Cosmic for a twos. Um, his mechanics are fantastic. Does not look like they're going to be. Gyro and Cheese versus AJ and Magic Bear Cole, as you, uh, as you foresighted. Um, but I wonder if it's on the cards for S5 Cosmic to be going into a 2v2 at some point, or whether he is just that one's main. Very, very good question for Gamers 8 when they do end up there. And uh, congratulations to Gyro for making Gamers 8 for the second time in a row. Unexpectedly, last time it was with Rogue, and now it's with Koi. So Ooh. we're capable of getting upset, and they would have been upset if that one had found its way into the back of the net. But those are the sort of moments that can happen in twos. Things can get confusing. Mm. I love twos. Gosh, I love twos. Twos is so exciting. It's such a fun game mode, and I, I, I want to see more twos competitions as well, because it feels a lot more intimate than threes, and, and you get to see a lot more cool plays, but it's not quite as try-hard as ones. <laughs> <laughs> Just that nice sweet spot between them all. Exactly. It's not cringe ones gameplay. Sorry, Johnny. Sure. Well, Magic Bear has shown some cringe ones gameplay of that 50-50 against Gyro. Cheese is having none of it and charges forwards. And now he's a little bit stuck in his opponent's corner. Should be getting out of there now. But so far, it's been mainly pressure for Koi. Ever since that huge pinch clearance, they've actually been keeping the ball really well in optic gaming territory until there's a mistake on the mm -hmm. backboard, Stumpy, and it's all backfired. And so it goes, the backboard backfire, Cheese missing it on that first attack, and then Gyro isn't able to make contact. Magic Bear just has to wait and poach, taps it low, sees Gyro falling back down. If he can get it with enough speed, which he did, the opposite left corner is going to be completely open for him. 1 minute 10 has elapsed, and Optic Gaming picking up the first goal. But Koi have looked okay. Gyro and Cheese a lot better balanced in their attack and defense. Yesterday, it's basically Cheese going for all the plays and Gyro just chilling at the back, trying to look a little bit safe, worried almost, worried to commit. It would turn into a free goal again. So this time he seems more keen to get involved, and that's what we want to see from Koi. Optic, we know what they're capable of, though. AJ, as soon as he gets the ball, even in threes, he was finding more space than he was available on the pitch. So let alone in a 2v2. And here comes Cheese, though. AJ's, AJ's also probably got a little bit of a chip on his shoulder from losing that wand. And I feel like that's a bit of a scary position to have AJ in. If he's feeling either very confident or very peeved, where he's thinking, I should have won that. I can win that. Why didn't I win that? So good chance here for AJ to be showing to us and to every single person watching, um, the few thousand that are tuning in online. Hello. Uh, I'd like to be seeing what AJ is able to put up in this match. Oh, there's a pass there. If Jaro can find him, he's actually not going to need to at all. It's the snapshot and it's 1-1. Uh, mate, that's a vintage tap and smash. Look at that. Yeah. Up once. Oh, barely Ooh. left the floor. Gyro, I wanted to see a tap and smash, mate. How dare you? Uh, we'll see what this is about. We'll um, uh, we'll figure out what this uh, pause is all about. Make sure all the teams are happy. Make sure we can get straight back into it. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I like seeing the, the, the simpler plays sometimes work out. Very 2015 meta is the tap and smash. If you yeah, manage to get one great. of those, if you manage to get one of those, uh, at the start of Rocket League, you're unranked, but you're hoping to get all-star or whatever it was mm -hmm. called. You, you nail your tap and smashes and you will make your way towards, what other ranks were there back in the early days? There was Rising star. star. Rising star. There was, was there bronze? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Do what I, I do remember, remember is at the end of the first season, if you were top 100, you got a platinum mm. crown. Uh, yeah. I never got a platinum crown. You had to finish. You could have done. You could have done I know. Back then. I could have. If I'd have just grinded, man, that could have been my moment. I want so nice to bring that back. Bring back the platinum crown for the top 100, and only if you finish in the top 100. Because then you've got people battling to make sure they stay in it, and that is good content. Get it trending. Hashtag bring back the platinum crown if you finish in the top 100, but only if you finish in the top 100. Can we shorten it? No. So platy C. No, we cannot. Okay, that feels there is no shortening to be done. Uh, this Very series cool. is in a tentative state right mm. now. We've got this 2v2 going on where uh, Optic will definitely be the favorites. You know, they've been pretty much blitzing through everybody in the 2v2. Yesterday in the mm -hmm. 2v2 uh, against LJ and Hoxer, I'm just looking now, they won it 4-1. 
And that's a, that's a high level of twos that they won pretty comfortably as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but we are, I believe, getting back to it now. And I think we're going to be starting at one goal apiece. So the tap and smash counts. We're happy. Get that man a platinum crown. Uh, was the tap and smash not for 2-1? Oh, it doesn't matter. Does not matter. Cheese immediately off the kickoff. No problem. Manages to send it nice and high with the reset, losing AJ and Magic Bear, and then still gets the dunk in the top corner. Unbelievable. We get sent straight back into the fray. The evolution of the tap and smash right there. And Koi have completely turned it around for a second. I thought that maybe Magic Bear was going to be stuck getting some boost, but actually it's gone all the way down to the other end. Disappointing for Koi. Optics, so thank you very much. Oh, Dude, of these kickoffs, they are the ones. That, that's, that's all that matters, apparently. Um, Cole, what did you see? I heard you gasp. There was a demo which I'd completely missed. Okay, f fair enough. Valid. Very valid. Tool, and a very close 2v2, and I'm happy to see that. This is what we want to see, the nail-biting mm -hmm. sort of matchups. And the ball can slow down, and these players can really take control and feel their nerves. I sense sometimes in a 3v3, they haven't got time to be nervous. In this, you've got time on the ball, and that's when you can make your mistakes, you know, when you have mm -hmm. too much time on the ball. AJ to be taking that ball away from both defenders onto the bat ball with only 12 boots. He has to leave with the boot steal coming in his favor. Chief's pinching it wide. If there's any shot that can come in, it would be a goal. But instead, AJ is able to intercept up for that second touch to keep Gyro away from a nice, easy shot towards the net. Chief's to be sent high above AJ with 50 boost. He has to collect it onto the backboard. A wonderful player falls down towards Gyro in the midfield. A cut central Ooh. shot high. He's going for some real snapshots. Yeah, he is. He is loving the little tippy tappy in front and then dodge into it. Almost worked again against Optic. The second goalkeeper was able to keep it away, but it's more coy pressure. Gyro's coming forwards. AJ just says to Magic Bear, you take this one for now. I'll chill back and get some boost. I'm trying to do something with it a little bit later. That little bit later is now now, but AJ's actually missed it from the double. How rarely do you see AJ missing a clean double mm. tap like that? When he's under this kind of pressure, trying to make sure that he does not lose it to his teammates, then that is, those issues are going to be coming in. But what a fantastic pass here from Gyro in that back right corner. He keeps it close and then goes to that quick pass central. Bumps AJ as well. Wouldn't matter too much. AJ was not back in time. But with Cheese central, that is just going to be a little old tap in. Such a 2v2 improvement from Koi right now against Optic. This is so much better than they played yesterday, even in the series that they won against Complexity. A reminder, they lost 6-1 in the 2v2 in a series that they won overall, just showing the disparity of their 2's ability compared to 1's of S5 Cosmic and, of course, their 3v3 gameplay, which has been pretty fantastic throughout this entire tournament. As Gyro takes another touch, getting so involved, actually takes the early shot. Gyro, but don't know what to do with him. Gyro is a player reborn and getting that touch high onto the backboard, then immediately wrapping back round, threads the needle between Magic Bear and AJ. With under a minute left, Gyro is giving life to Koi and they are swimming away with the series. 58 seconds for Optic to save themselves in Game is About Borders. It could be a good start. AJ thought he had the chance, but Gyro, man of the match in the 2v2, snatches it away and he gets the second save as well for good measure. More good comms from Cheese and him. Cheese wave dashing around the corner. AJ's in the way. Let's see if anyone's going to be able to close him down. His Magic Bear, he's up. He's got a flip reset in front of him. Gyro avoids the bump and he gets the save as well. Oh. And then the extra touch. So frustrating for Optic. Perfect play from Koi. 25 seconds, two goals to be brought by with AJ challenging versus Cheese on that left-hand side as it flies high. That is going to be a devastating five seconds ticking down. Five more for this setup. AJ can't get it around Gyro. Magic Bear to shoot. No bump coming in. Good attempt, but with Cheese now dribbling it out of his own half, that is going to be a wonderful series result for Koi. They will find themselves in the lower bracket final. Top three for the team that nearly were not in even here. It's a great story for Koi. They are going to be going to Saudi Arabia, which we already knew for Gamers 8, but they're going to be going there with confidence, with belief, with 3v3 and their 1v1 ace in the hole. And now they've also got 2v2 in their back pocket. Koi are a real force and G2v version 1 later on. Whoever loses, beware. 
Great play. I, I, I'm amazed that Koi managed to beat out Optic in two, uh, two game modes that Optic were looking really good in, to be honest. And the 2v2, I thought, I mean, as we were both saying, that seemed to be somewhat an Optic gimme. Uh, we were thinking, okay, they have looked great so far, and Koi have looked weaker. 3v3, Koi looked to have the lead. And then the 1v1 was much closer as well, with S5 Cosmic coming up versus AJ. But a 3-1 victory? Outstanding play from them. A top three result. Of course, they're going to be going to Gamers 8 in August regardless. Beautiful, beautiful stuff from them. And what a, what a fun resurgence we're seeing from them too. Yeah, it's what we want to see. It's what the Crew Battles format can enable. Teams who may have been struggling, may not have been playing particularly well, suddenly finding something inside themselves. And you know what? As well as the context of this tournament, mm -hmm. that's going to serve Koi well in the RLCS throughout. You know, yeah. they'll have that belief back. They'll have that winning habit. And it really does breed momentum. Yeah, a little look earlier at Koi's results in the RLCS. They're not really worth mentioning too much when they come to looking at the top dogs and the teams that they have beaten as well. They've beaten complexity to get here. And that was the one where Sosa was saying on social media, look, we win this, we go to Saudi Arabia. We get the chance to win our share of $2 million. They've secured five grand each regardless by getting there, even if they finish in last place. Great for them. Koi getting into that lower bracket final. They'll be facing the loser of G2 versus version one, which is going to be a pretty scary match, I feel, um, coming up. A quick prediction on that one, Cole, Ooh. if I may. I'll go with version one. I mean, you can't bet mm. against Daniel and Beast Mode, I think. How about you, mate? You'll be quick. Oh, be quick. Let's go with G2. Be quick. G2. Bags. Stubby says G2. I say V1. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. I'm going to stick with the match at hand. Uh, we'll get back to that a little bit later on with my two lovely analysts that are joining me in the virtual studio. Koi have done it again. Moving to the lower bracket final. Optic have been sent packing, but not without a little commiseration prize. $125,000 that they will be able to donate to a charity of their choice and a spot at Gamers 8 later in the year. I've got to say, that was pretty impressive show out, especially by Cheese, uh, I have to say, going into that first opening match of the 3v3s, uh, Johnny Boy. Yeah, just un unbelievable. I mean, we said it bef before the match started, they have a better record going in to this match in 3v3 than Optic did, and they beat the team in 3v3 that sent Optic to the lower bracket in the first place in complexity yesterday. So for me, all signs pointed at Koi winning this one. They did win it. I want an official apology from all of you Optic fans in chat yep. who thought that we were talking nonsense because when you look at the numbers, the, we, we actually, you know, you can see this coming. Um, Cosmic as well, you know, brilliant. Uh, form he's in. He had one nervous 1v1 game, the very first 1v1 game he played yesterday against Atomic. Since then, he's unbelievable. So I think Koi could, they could go all the way. Knew that chat would go up in flames. Jorby, uh, as Koi wait in the lower bracket final, put yourself in their shoes. Who are they praying to not go up against? Oh, I mean, honestly, I think Koi are, are big chill mode. I, I honestly don't think they care who they end up playing out of that upper bracket, because Really, both teams are going to be difficult. You got version one, you got G2. I'm sure every fan out there is thinking, well, I'd rather play G2 because Dan Daniel Beast Mode's on the other side. But I doubt Koi are, are thinking that way right now. They just took down Complexity and Optic in a row. They got to feel pretty confident about their play. I I'm sure they'll feel that way no matter who they play. Yeah, I felt, you know, Koi came out of the gates absolutely steaming. And like I mentioned already, Cheese looking really strong right now. Not soft and gooey like actual Cheese, Johnny. I told you the dad jokes were inbound. We've started and you're not going to be able to stop me, kids. Highlights on your screen right now brought to you by Aramco. Do you feel like this is a good indication, Johnny, of uh, what to expect at Gamers 8 later in the year? Because, I mean, they look pretty unstoppable in crew battle format. Yeah, it's great that they're performing in 3v3. Sometimes in, in crew battle format, you have a team that's just getting hard carried by the other game modes and they're scraping 3v3 wins here and there, but they're, they're pretty consistently getting wins in 3v3. Um, so far, they I think they're what, five wins, three losses, if, uh, if I'm remembering correctly. So they're, they're winning 3v3. It's not just about the other game modes, although 1v1 is, I think, two and one for them now. 2v2, the game mode that they just uh, they eliminated Optic with as well, clearly world class. So so yeah, we're we're not just trying to sell you guys a Cinderella story that's not going to happen. They could win this if they could beat Complexity, if they could beat Optic, then they could beat anyone in this tournament. V1 um, had a harder time with Complexity than Koi did yesterday. Ooh, well we've got an updated bracket for you, and it's going to be on your screens 
right about now from here at Gamers Without Borders. Only three matches remaining in this competition. $1.25 million on the line. The upper bracket final is going to be next with G2 taking on version one. But there, there's your lower bracket. Round three, Koi versus Optic Gaming. Koi take that spot. They will face the loser of G2 and version one. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Johnny and Jorby, you won't be with me when we return. So I want a quick prediction from you both for that next match. Up G2 versus version one. Johnny Boy, kick us off. I think I'm gonna have to say version one. Um, yeah, I think that they're probably gonna be able to take enough of the uh, probably all the extra uh, gamers, all the ones and twos. And I think, yeah, can they get one win in 3v3 out of four against G2? I think so. So I have to say V1. Ooh, okay. What about yourself, Joel B? I have to go with. Uh... G2. Uh, oh. I think G2 are going to uh, win in these 3v3 modes. I think that's the one area they can beat version 1 in. I think they take all three 3v3s and lose in 2v3. All four, Jarby. All four. four best me. of seven. Yeah, best of seven. Sorry, yeah. All four <laughs> 3v3s. Exactly. We're going to be moving. my own head here. We'll be moving from best of fives to best of sevens for the three remaining matches of the day, and we're going to go to a very short break. So go to the bathroom. If you're in the UK, get a cup of tea, get a digestive biscuit, because we are going to be back in the upper bracket final, and that's going to be between G2 and version 1. See you in a bit.